Hi there, I'm Andrew, you're watching That Gamer Ajax, and welcome to the last of the Emberwind class guides with the Harbingers. Now, Harbingers focus on the deadly magical arts in the worlds of Emberwind, and they use these to great effects to both bolster their allies and devastate their enemies. So, let's go ahead and jump right into these classes. Now, while these classes might be a little bit more difficult starting out compared to some of their uh, compatriots that are available, these classes have a lot of combinations they're able to pull off to, to some of the most devastating effects in the entire game. So make sure that if you're going to be playing one of the Harbingers that you really invest the time into learning how this kit works and experiment with combos that work for you. Now, as a disclaimer, because of the overall fluid nature of Emberwind, these are going to be my overall recommendations when it comes to uh, skills and items to pick that can kind of help boost your classes a little bit. So they are going to be entirely up to you as to how you actually play them. So let's go ahead and jump right in to how these classes work, starting with the Ardent. Now, Ardens really closely resemble pyromancers from other games. They focus a lot on uh, fire-based magic that they can use to just, you know, set their enemies alight and heal allies through different kinds of cauterization. Now, Ardents also focus on stacking the burning condition, which is absolutely devastating in this game. Uh, when an enemy is caught on fire and they are burning, they are taking a d20 of damage every single turn. Now, you can stack this multiple times as an Ardent. So you can already imagine how fast you're able to kind of knock out and even the most powerful foes with damage they can't get rid of. Personally, I think that with the exception of perhaps the Warrior, the Ardent is one of the most outright offensive based classes in the game. Really, you want to get in, you want to maintain that range between you and your enemies and just keep burning them and burning them and burning them over and over again. If your allies happen to go down, uh, you're able to heal them up. So make sure that you have at least one healing spell stocked as you're playing this class. Now, as you kind of grow and develop your Ardent and you get later into the game, it's going to start, you know, requiring a little bit of meta knowledge, actually. This is one of the times where tactics in this game are not a bad thing at all, and you can really start messing with your enemies just based on your character's overall knowledge of magic. Uh, this can be done to make it that way enemies can't even use a decent section of their terms as one of their examples. Now, when you are playing an Ardent, I would highly recommend picking uh, traits at character creation that are going to allow you to increase your Amplify limit. This is a class that really focuses on sacrificing decent chunks of its turn to be able to boost one spell to an enormous effect. So the more that you can amplify a spell, the better that you're going to be able to do this on every single turn. I would also recommend uh, being able to increase either your dodge or your critical strike capabilities. Um, if you have a high dodge check, you roll a d20. If you get below a certain number, you're going to just outright avoid damage. And by increasing your critical, it means that you're going to be able to hit for maximum damage and ignore enemy defenses entirely. So you're going to want that high on this highly offensive class. Now, when it comes to picking equipment, uh, when you're building your Arden, I would recommend taking either a scepter or a staff, depending on if you want a one or a two-handed weapon. Uh, this is going to make it so that way you're able to start casting spells faster at the beginning of each battle that you get into. And with the Arden, even just one spell is enough to really get you going. So the faster you can get that uh, started, the sooner that enemy is going to die. Uh, when it comes to picking your character's ranged weapon, I would recommend taking a wand. Uh, what this especially does for magic users is that it increases their critical strike capabilities. So as we've already mentioned, the higher that crit chance is, the easier time you're going to have when you are going to be hitting your opponents and doing massive amounts of damage. So that kind of summarizes the Ardent as a whole, but now let's go ahead and move on to the Druid. Now, unlike its Dungeons & Dragons counterpart, the Druid in Emmerwind focuses more on applying slow status effects such as uh, poison and then being able to consume those for massive bursts of damage. You also have a decent amount of battlefield control and a lot of ways to bolster your allies. This is almost kind of like the tankiest of the mage classes in my opinion, and I think that you can kind of use this to either play as a ranged healing unit or a more of a support unit, or you can really be in the thick of things if you want to kind of play this more melee centric. It's really up to you. Druids are also surprisingly self-sustaining with quite a few of the abilities that they have. I mean, you have uh, some options that allow you to just 
heal if you get damaged, or you can even just become invulnerable for an entire turn. Now granted, that is a big action for you to be able to do, and there are risks associated with not being able to do it later. So make sure that you're kind of timing yourself wisely. Now early in the game, druids kind of really focus more on embracing that support role. They have a lot of ways of healing and bolstering allies by, you know, allowing them to like alter roles as an example, or take reduced damage if they do happen to get hit. Uh, however, the longer you play the game, the more your options uh, to become an offensive powerhouse really begin to open up. You have ways of bolstering, you know, melee attacks, for, as an example, if you're willing to sacrifice being able to use spells. So you can really just kind of turn from this kind of tanky kind of caster, kind of melee unit into just an all-out fighter. That's what you really want to do. Now, when it comes to picking traits for your druid, you're really going to want to increase your sustain limit when you make this character. Um, this means that you're going to be able to have multiple spells going at the same time. Think of it a lot like concentration spells in Dungeons and Dragons, except you don't have the issue of, you know, not being able to stack those spells which is not a rule in everyone. Uh, you are able to stack as many as you can reach the limit. So the higher your sustain limit is, which for most people it's you know around one, maybe two spells, if you have that higher as a druid, you're gonna be able to start doing massive amounts of poison damage and keeping debilitating effects on your opponents as they are trying to get close to you. This is also one of the classes that I would recommend that you take um, some defensive stats as well. You know, if you have a high health pool, if you have high toughness, which reduces incoming physical damage, or even high resistance if you think that you're gonna be taking more magical damage, you want to be kind of tanky because the longer you're up, the longer you can keep those sustain effects going. Now, when it comes to equipment, I would actually recommend playing this one a little bit different. Um, if you wanna play a little bit riskier and have a higher crit chance, take an ax. I would also recommend taking a two-handed pole arm because this increases your attack range and also increases your penetration stat, which means that you're going to be able to ignore enemy defenses if you happen to roll uh, below a certain number whenever you're making an attack. If When you're picking your ranged weapon, I would actually really recommend taking the bow. Um, as a druid, it's going to matter more that you are hitting your opponent so you can start stacking those effects rather than doing a lot of penetration damage or even critting. Uh, and then when you're picking your armor, you're gonna kinda wanna go based on what you need more than anything. If you think that you're gonna be staying back and away from opponents, I would recommend taking robes because this makes it so that way enemy mages or anything using magical attacks is gonna have a harder time doing damage to you. Or if you're gonna be in the thick of fight, take heavy armor. It reduces the physical damage that you'll be taking. Now, lastly, we have the invoker. Now, the Invoker is, in my opinion, probably the weirdest class that is available in em Emberwind. It kind of takes all rules of reality and then decides to rewrite them into whatever you want it to be. What this means is that early on, you are going to be sacrificing overall damage output to be able to alter the battlefield to both, you know, heal units that step on certain squares or increase the damage of uh, units that are stepping onto those squares as well. This can both help your allies, but it can also help your enemies. So make sure that you are being very careful where you are dropping these abilities. You also kind of focus on holding spells on enemies and doing a, a little bit of piercing damage, which means that you're ignoring their defenses. And this works a lot like poison, just not quite as strong. Now, eventually, you can get there because you're able to boost your own offensive capabilities and increase the number of die that you're gonna be rolling every single turn. Now, later in the game, Invokers truly get weird in the best way possible. You're able to start controlling massive groups of enemies, especially if they're in tight clusters. Uh, you can make it so way enemy grunts, which are the lowest ranked style enemies, they just can't even move. So if they're far away, you can keep them there. You can start swapping your offensive and defensive values in terms of your ranged weapons and your melee weapons and your toughness and your resistance. There's just a lot of ways that you can play this truly tricky class now this one I think does have a bit of a learning curve to it, so be really, really flexible on swapping out your class actions if something doesn't really seem like it's working for you. Now, much like the Druid, I would highly recommend increasing your sustain limit when you are building out this character. It means that you're gonna be able to keep more of those spells going at any given time, and you're gonna be able to start uh, adding up a lot of damage in a very short amount of time, the more spells that you can stack on one opponent. I would also highly recommend taking um, either something that will increase your ability to dodge or your resistance, just because you're not really gonna be in the thick of a fight as an invoker, you really wanna kind of stay back and you know, kind of pelt enemies with those negative conditions. 
if an enemy mage targets you, having that high resistance is gonna mean that you are able to uh, avoid a decent chunk of that damage. Now, when you are playing your invoker and you're picking the equipment for it, I would highly recommend taking a scepter. Now, this doesn't have a whole lot of damage initially, but it's gonna allow you to cast spells at a much faster rate, much like the Arden that we talked about earlier. When it comes to your offhanded weapon, it's gonna depend, do you want more offensive damage or do you want to be a little bit more defensive? If you go offense, take that offhanded weapon. It's going to make it so that way you're able to do just more initial damage every single turn. If you want to be a little bit more defensive, take prayer breeds. It's going to make it so it boosts your character's willpower, which is essentially boosting your saving throw chances when you're playing Emberwind. If you need something that's a little bit more similar to D&D for reference. When you're picking a ranged weapon, I would go with either a wand or a bow, depending if you want to try to increase your critical strikes when you are rolling to try to hit enemies or the bow to increase your accuracy, which just means that you're gonna be able to hit and start applying those effects earlier. Now, when it comes to picking armor for your invoker, I would highly recommend taking light armor. This is just going to increase your dodge chance and make it so that way you can just avoid damage entirely. Well, this is going to go ahead and wrap up the Harbingers that are available in Emberwind. I think that these are the classes that have a ton of potential. It might have a little bit more of a learning curve, but are able to absolutely devastate battlefields as you are playing through this game. I know that I have had a player that played as one, and he made sure that I did not get to have as much fun as a storyteller and held the strongest enemies at bay. So, which of the Harbingers sounded the most interesting to you? Have you played any of these before if you've played Emberwind? Or what seems unique about them compared to some of their uh, counterparts in games such as Dungeons & Dragons? If you have ideas, go ahead and comment below. Let me know. If you liked the video, please give it that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, maybe consider subscribing. We talk about all kinds of tabletop games here on the channel, and hopefully we can introduce a new one to you that you might like. But, until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.